The pale-skinned Rataki are made for battle. Centuries of constant warfare have weeded out the weak, shaping the remainder into proud, passionate, and deadly combatants. Even entertainment for this violent species is combat. The gladiator pits of their home planet, Ratatak, are the planet's most popular amusement, well known for being the most brutal in the galaxy. Exposed to their species' competitive culture from birth, Rataki develop into fearsome warriors. In Star Wars The Old Republic, you can play any type of character as a Rataki, as species are not restricted to certain origin stories or combat styles in the game. However, you may need to unlock the Rataki species depending on what class you want to play as. Free-to-play players who are just starting off will need to unlock Rataki before they create a Rataki character. Subscribers, however, can automatically create a Sith Inquisitor, Bounty Hunter, or Imperial Agent as a Rataki while they are subscribed. Once the character is created, they do not need to remain subscribed to continue playing that created character. There's three other ways that you can unlock the Rataki. The first option, all players can unlock Rataki for all classes by purchasing the item Legacy Species Unlock Rataki from the Cartel Market with Cartel Coins or from the GTN with credits. The Cartel Market sells this unlock for 600 Cartel Coins. The price and availability on the GTN, however, will change day to day and per server, but it's likely very expensive. This unlock is per server, not account wide, and requires that you have an existing character of any type on that server who has reached level 10 and created a legacy. This is probably the least recommended way. Unlock option number two. Subscribers and preferred players who have a Rataki character can play a Rataki on a Sith Inquisitor, Bounty Hunter, or Imperial Agent, and then level them up to level 50, which will automatically unlock the Rataki option for all future characters, including the Sith Warrior, Trooper, Smuggler, Jedi Counselor, and Jedi Knight. This unlock is also per server and not account wide. Option number three, and probably the best option if you have it available. Subscribers can also unlock Rataki for all origin stories by spending 1.5 million credits as part of the legacy system after they have reached level 10 and created their legacy. Free to play and preferred players can technically do this too, but they have their credits capped at 1 million credits, making it very difficult. Just like the other two, this unlock is per server, not account wide. Now that we've talked about unlocking the Rataki so you can potentially play it for every class, let's talk about these different class stories as Rataki in the story and in roleplay. Rataki are fairly uncommon to find as Republic classes because they need to be unlocked first, so let's start on the Empire side of things. When it comes to the Sith Warrior and Sith Inquisitor, the Rataki have a very interesting history. Shortly after the Empire returned to Republic space, the young Sith Lord Darth Vic took notice of Ratatak and its people. Eager to make a name for himself, he journeyed to the planet and, casting aside a thousand years of anti-alien tradition, recruited a hundred tribes of Ratataki to populate his own personal army. Their prowess in battle made them a dangerous force, and the dozens of Force-sensitive among them became his personal acolytes. With the Rataki at his command, Darth Vic made a play for power in the Sith Empire that ultimately failed. In the wake of this failure, the Dark Council enslaved or killed all of the Rataki who followed Vic. Rumors about a small group of Rataki acolytes who helped betray Vic and were fully accepted for Sith training remain unsubstantiated. So if you're creating a Sith Warrior or Sith Inquisitor, the Rataki people already have a rich integration into the Sith lifestyle, as well as the fact that the Sith Inquisitor starts off as a slave that fits in really well with Rataki history. The Bounty Hunter and Imperial Agent are the other two classes you can kind of play by default as a subscriber when it comes to making a Rataki. For the Bounty Hunter, it's never a question of if the Hunter will find you, only when. Both infamous and anonymous at the same time, Bounty Hunters are far more than mercenaries for hire. Bounty Hunters carve their own paths, and it would not be surprising to see a Rataki Bounty Hunter. The opening of the galaxy to the Rataki led to adventurous individuals to settle on other worlds, becoming sought-after mercenaries, bodyguards, and Bounty Hunters. 
Imperial agents must master the arts of infiltration, seduction, and assassination to carry out the most dangerous and sensitive Imperial assignments. While it is uncommon to see an alien in the ranks of Imperial intelligence, the Minister of Intelligence recognizes the need to take advantage of an alien mind. A prominent Sith named Darth Malgus has seized the opportunity to create a new empire, one that embraces alien cultures and is strengthened by diversity. As you play the Imperial Agent story fairly early on, you'll actually be matched up with another Rodataki companion who is also in the pay of Imperial Intelligence. Now let's talk about the Rodataki on the Republic side. A Rodataki Jedi Consular or Jedi Knight would be fairly uncommon to see, but far from surprising. The dark history of the Rodataki has proven that Rodataki can be force sensitive, but many force sensitive Rodataki would have been snatched up on their homeworld by the Sith before the Jedi find them. This means the chances of a force sensitive Rodataki child being able to get into the Jedi are very low, but if they did happen to be away from Sith influences and the Empire's influences, they could very well make their way into the Jedi Order. Troopers are the embodiment of the Republic military's highest aspirations, the most advanced fighting force in the galaxy. While seeing a Ratataki soldier would not be too common, it wouldn't be unheard of either. A Ratataki who grew up on Ratatak or in the gladiatorial traditions of the Ratataki would make a fierce fighter. As for the smuggler, well, above all else, smugglers make their own destinies. Smugglers require fast reflexes, fast wits, and a fast draw with a blaster. Smugglers are beholden to no traditions, and it would not be surprising to see a Rodataki smuggler. Now let's talk about what Rodataki look like. Rodataki are very pale with no pigment in their skin. They do not have hair and often have tattoos or jewelry. Born and bred in a culture of war, Rodataki tattoo harsh, deep black symbols across their white skin and never walk away from a fight. Unlike Miriallans and Sabrax, there is very little lore related to the meaning of Rodataki tattoos. The only thing they have in common is that they always seem to be a dark purple or black color, standing out in stark contrast against their chalk white skin. If you're creating your Rodataki in Star Wars The Old Republic in addition to some of the pre-set tattoos that I'm showing off right now, there are also some tattoo-like complexions that other species don't have that you can layer up together with the tattoo slider in the character creator. Much like Sith Purebloods, who can add jewelry to their characters, Rodataki can as well, but there's no lore that describes its meaning or history. Ratataki jewelry in the character creator features piercings, nose rings, triangle shapes, and beaded chains all in silver metal. As Ratataki fall to the dark side, they have the option to turn on dark side corruption, where their eyes turn yellow, then orange, and their veins become darker and more prominent. As they don't have any pigment in their skin to start with, they do not become paler, unlike many of the other species who lose pigment as they turn to the dark side. Now let's talk about naming your character. You can choose any name you want for your Rodataki character. You don't have to try and follow any type of conventions, as Rodataki have spread far and wide across the galaxy, with some being given a traditional Rodataki name, while others have been given a name traditional to their home planet, and others take on a code name or nickname. Unlike some other species, Rodataki do not seem to have any rules or suggestions when it comes to naming. Some take both first and last names, while others stick to a single name. There's really only one well-known Rodataki name, and that's Kaleo Danis. There's actually not that many named Rodataki across all of Star Wars media, but I have put together a little list so you can take a look and maybe name your character something similar. You can check that list out as well as a link to a name generator tool in the description of this video. Look for the written guide of this Rodataki video. Just like there's not very many named Rodataki in the Star Wars universe, there's also not very many notable or famous Rodataki and most players would struggle to name even three or four well-known Rodataki. Rodataki are rarely depicted outside of Star Wars The Old Republic. 
and they are only occasionally mentioned as a species as a whole in a few books and reference books. In our list of well-known Rodotaki, we have Kaleo Danis, who we'll talk more about later. She's an anarchist by trade. There's the Lady of Pain, a crime lord from the Bounty Hunter story. There's Ivory, also a crime lord from the Imperial Agent story. Amaran, who used to be the Imperial Quest Givers for the Alderaan bonus series. We've got Les Matron, who's part of the companion recruitment for Akavi Spar and for Mako in the expansions. There's Sriracha, a mad prisoner as part of the Belzebus Classified Prisoner Rehabilitation Program as part of the smuggler story. There's Dr. Charnagas, an Imperial male Ratataki doctor who is taking Republic soldiers and peeling off their faces, giving them to Imperial soldiers so they could be saboteurs. There's Idis from the comics who is helping Asajj Ventress. We got Silas Fleetfire, a merchant. On Darvana, she's not famous, I just thought she had a super cool name. In the Bells of his prisons, we have Solkaz, a male Ratataki criminal and leader of the Blood Talath tribe. There's Ashi, the Republic pilot, and probably the only good Rodotaki I've seen so far. And lastly, Hyrad, the Dread Guard in Terra from Beyond's operation as one of the bosses, is actually a Rodotaki as well, even though you can't see him under his mask. When people think of Rodotaki, they often have another character come to mind. Asajj Ventress, well known from the Clone Wars series and who has spread across multiple points of media at this point, is a strange case. At one point in Star Wars lore, she was considered a Rodotaki and was listed as such even in now defunct databanks and Hello archives officially by Star Wars. Later, this fact was changed to better fit a new storyline, and she was then labeled as a similar Zabrak human hybrid species called Dathomirian, though she has strong ties to the Ratataki homeworld of Ratatak. So, for all intents and purposes, when Star Wars The Old Republic was created, the species of Ratataki was kind of loosely based around Asajj Ventress, but since then, Asajj Ventress has officially not been made a Ratataki. Awkward. While they're easily recognized as the pale species with nose rings, there's a bit more to Ratataki lore. Compared to many of the species though, Ratataki current life and society is not very well explored beyond their gladiatorial nature. I'm going to go into a deep dive of the lore that I did find. You don't need to know any of this when creating your Ratataki character. This is more if you want to create a backstory or history for your character that really ties in to the Ratataki people. Deep in the Outer Rim, the Ratataki species evolved in bleak isolation for thousands of years, clinging to existence in sprawling caverns beneath the planet's surface. They were driven underground by monstrous beasts they believed were gods and savage storms that made the land nearly uninhabitable. In their subterranean exile, the Ratataki tribes fought amongst themselves incessantly over scarce resources and many tribes even resorted to cannibalism. The weak and the sick were sacrificed so that the strong might survive and one day claim the surface world. Eventually, the mighty warlord Ratatak managed to unite his people long enough to drive back the horrible beasts on the planet's surface and establish mighty fortresses amidst the mountainous terrain. Though his life was lost in the struggle on the surface, Ratataki's name lived on. The unification of the Ratataki was brief, and the tribe settled back into their constant infighting. But at long last, they had emerged from their dark exile and contact was made with the greater galaxy. This led many Ratataki to settle on other worlds, becoming sought after mercenaries, bodyguards, and bounty hunters. The small, red world of Ratatak floats in the far outer rim like a drop of blood. The planet is so remote that it remained undiscovered by the Republic, and the native humanoid species evolved without the guidance or influence of other galactic forces. Although the species remained primitive, they quickly learned how to kill one another. Scattered resources on the planet led to struggles for survival, and the Ratataki never bothered with the benefits of barter and trade amongst themselves. As technology evolved, the Ratataki focused all their efforts on more brutal methods for murder. War became the norm. Over generations of fighting, most of the cities on the planet were reduced to rubble and huge portions of the planet's population became victims of mass genocide. The Ratataki never developed weapons of planetary scale, 
so the bloody world wars raged on for generations. This ceaseless violence prevented the world from developing space travel, and the Rodotaki believed they were alone in the galaxy. They had no concept of galactic community, and only conquering their neighbors seemed important. Those that discovered Ratatak were unscrupulous slavers common in the Outer Rim. The wiry Ratataki themselves proved to be an unpopular export. They were simply too difficult to train and too violent to contain. But credits could be made by importing slaves to the War Barons, who would pay handsomely for any exotic edge in combat. Mercenary duty was a popular reason to come to Ratatak, though negotiating an end of service often was difficult. While war continued everywhere else, an enterprising Ratataki from a rare, neutral province hatched a lucrative idea. If prospective mercenaries and slave soldiers had to prove themselves in gladiatorial combat, the credits generated from wagering and the spectacle could be used to buy more soldiers and off-world weapons. Thus, the gladiator pits of Ratatak came to be, and many sprang up in what rare patches of neutral lands could be found in the craggy world. The largest, known as the Cauldron, hosted the best combatants, and war barons and generals would attend to seek out the soldiers that would win them their wars. Slavers filled the pits with violent candidates. Some would purposefully price the more successful warriors out of the purchase range of the Ratataki generals, as their gladiators were more profitable from fighting multiple battles than being sold into military service. But it was a rare gladiator indeed who could survive multiple fights. The drumbeat of war and the rattle of bones are the oral accompaniment to existence on Ratatak, an unknown region's world where lifespans are short and happiness is fleeting. Ratatak is distinguished by square-walled canyons and dry gullies. Its red rocks evoke the hue of spilled blood. The chalk-skinned Ratataki are believed to be the descendants of a forgotten Republic expedition while the rest of the planet's population seems to be drawn from hundreds of unknown region worlds. Mercenaries often come to Ratatak and are forced to make it their home when its ruined infrastructure fails to provide off-world passage. Animal life has been hunted nearly into extinction, though a few hungry alpha predators still feed on corpses in the outer wastelands. Conditions are too harsh on Ratatak to sustain widespread agriculture. The planet's population has been dying off for centuries, as the grim pace accelerated, a war over resources exploded between Rodotok's six major federated tribes and countless small syndicates. But the relative backwardness of Rodotok technology restricted their armies to the use of blasters, blades, and bombs. An ebb and surge cycle of worldwide wars ground on for generations. A crafty Rodotaki arms merchant exploited the planet's blood sport culture by building the Cauldron, an immense gladiatorial arena. Inside its stone pit, local champions and off-world challengers battled to the death while wagering profits fed the arms industry. The cauldron's notoriety spread among underworld infochants in the Republic, and the hyperroute to Ratataki became a prize traded among shadow kingpins. The Ratataki are feared across the galaxy for their well-earned reputation as brutally violent warriors. Hardened by their unforgiving homeworld, the Ratataki have waged war against each other for centuries. Even during times of peace, the Ratataki take to ceremonial gladiatorial combat to settle personal slights and family rivalries. The Ratataki lived in relative isolation until the beginning of the Great War, when the Sith Lord Vic discovered their rocky and barren homeworld. Vic promised the Ratataki glory in the Great War against the Republic and recruited an army of Force-sensitive Ratataki to be trained in the ways of the Sith. Before long, Vic had forged a powerful Ratataki army. In a daring power grab, the ambitious Sith Lord rallied these warriors against the Empire. Vic was killed during the insurrection, and many of the Ratataki survivors were enslaved or executed. After their attempt to overthrow the Empire, the Sith took notice of the fearsome Ratataki. The strongest Ratataki were plucked from slavery and sent to undergo the rigorous trials to become Sith. But other Ratataki resisted the Empire. Some fled their homeworld to live as mercenaries, signing on with criminal outfits or the Hutt Cartel. Others have stayed behind to fight the Empire's presence on their homeworld, not for freedom or for the Republic, but simply for the glory of the battle. Anyone can claim the title of Bounty Hunter, 
But the majority of these icy professionals are human. Their ubiquity allows human bounty hunters to go just about anywhere and blend in. But not blending in has its own advantages. Spooked targets make bad choices that can reveal their locations, something upon which Chiss, Rattataki, and Zabrak bounty hunters cheerfully capitalize. Any being with the capacity for cunning and devotion to the dark side may become an inquisitor after surviving the Sith trials of Korriban. Humans and Sith purebloods were long the most common to ascend to power, but since aliens and slaves were allowed into the Sith Academy, Twi'lex, Zabrax, and Radataki have all risen from nothing to become Sith Inquisitors. And lastly, let's take a look at some of the lives of notable Radataki, starting with Kaleo Danis. Multiple contradictory accounts make full background assessment difficult. Subject likely born on Radatak, escaped homeworld at a young age, proceeded to find employment as freelance enforcer and assassin for major criminal syndicates, exchange, hot cartel, and individual underworld figures, role. Persistent links to Brentel 4 anarchist cells. Minimal activity within imperial borders. Kaleo Danis prizes her freedom and will lie murder and blackmail in order to ensure that she is in control of a situation and able to indulge her vices. Known to pursue lengthy vendettas to redress grievances, possesses a track record of expertly manipulating employers, lovers, and associates. Agents should not be fooled by attempts at seduction. As with many mercenaries, her loyalty cannot be purchased, but her services can be, if only temporarily. No known military training, but extremely capable with assault weapons, has been known to bite when disarmed. During your conversations with her in-game, she actually tells you a bit about her life on Ratatak, and here's what she has to say about it. Life was miserable on Ratatak. Backwards people, living in caves, big on tribal blood feuds. Almost got stoned to death when I was 12. That's when I knew I had to get out. Rocks. Fist-sized. Thrown at me. My dad was from a cursed family, which is basically tribal propaganda for we want your land. Some great-grandfather of mine was a warlord. Conquer a few tribes and you're cannibal demon of the summit. Like I said, stonings. No way I was staying planet side. My family kept their pride, hid the loot. Not that I got anything or I might have stuck around. Tell you what, I'll make it easier to live with. I've given up teaching you anything, but we ever get someone new? I'll show them the ancient blood traditions of rat attack, and maybe how to down a Rodian ale without puking. While many rat who have escaped the Empire's grasp end up with criminal ties, this doesn't always have to happen. You'll run into a rat named Ashi if you check out the Galactic Starfighter quests in Star Wars The Old Republic. Adopted by prominent Imperial socialites who named him after his faded grey skin, Ashi was often shown off as though he were a house pet. In his formative years, however, the Radataki did not get the joke and took his adopted parents' grooming very seriously, believing in their desire to have him one day become an Imperial officer. An early attempt to join the military academy on Dromenkos forced Ashi to finally see the painful truth. Humiliated, he defected to the Republic, where he has excelled as a weapons specialist. Ashi takes great pleasure in exacting sweet revenge on the Empire, one operation at a time, always making sure to send hollow recordings to his disowned family that depict his every triumph as a proud soldier and citizen of the Galactic Republic. I hope you enjoyed this really deep dive into Radataki culture. If you have a Radataki character in Star Wars The Old Republic, or are creating a Radataki character for any other type of Star Wars media project you're making, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you want to show your support for these videos about Star Wars The Old Republic, visit sutterista.com support. And if you want more videos like this to show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. As always, may the Force be with you.